Okay, so the next thing is our science fair mentorship. So this is done in partnership with the Learning Exchange. And this is where volunteers um, go into Britannia Secondary School, it's one of the, and Templeton, both downtown east side schools. And they mentor students um, as they develop and construct their science fair projects. So it starts in November, it goes till February. Uh, you meet once a week with your um, high school students and right from the start you're there from constructing their hypothesis to doing the experiments, analyzing their data, um, making their poster boards and then there's a science fair competition and the winner from that competition or the winners go on to the district and regional, regional district and then the national science fair and last year um, we had a group go all the way to the nationals and they got an honorable mention so that was really we were really proud of them um, I can't think of what else I think I missed well, something <laughs> More time commitment because it's uh, seven or eight visits, but then you really, you really have the chance to develop this relationship with <coughs> the students and also with your team. The, the way the structure is that we have a grad student that we call a pod leader supervising a team of three or four undergrads, and then they also supervise uh, each team, supervise a project. So it's really a teamwork, there's a lot of mentoring involved, and in it. it's a very fulfilling experiment. I think all the the mentors have uh, enjoyed their, their experience and then seeing those kids going all the way up uh, and act, act being excellent in those competitions uh, really shows how this program can, can be important for them. And it's again just another way that we bring resources into under-resourced areas in Vancouver. Okay, SMART, Scientific Methods and Research Technique, is like the partnership program except there's more structure. You're given um, the lesson plans and the activities that you're going to be performing to your class. Um, the supplies are dropped off and it runs, starts in January, goes to March. And over four weeks, you visit the classroom and perform the experiments. And you're also, there's also the tri-mentoring structure. So you're the pod leader with your three or four undergraduate students, kind of leading them and guiding them as they facilitate uh, the activity with the students. And they're a little bit older, they're, it's grade five, six, and seven, yes. And um, so again, like the uh, partnership program, you're, you're a little bit less autonomous in what you can do. But again, um, if you're worried about commitment over the whole school year, this is another option. It's also, it's also a good way to join our program if you don't feel very comfortable going in a classroom because you don't have an experience uh, teaching kids. I remember that was my most stressful presentation the first time so I was afraid they wouldn't understand anything. So that's a good way to start with a program and then you might become more comfortable designing your own activities afterward. Yep. Uh, Reading Week Projects is another program we run with the Learning Exchange. Um, this is where you will work with the school or the class, um, the teachers and construct a science fair, a science related project that will run over the first three days of reading week. Um, so it's, uh, I guess you're, you're there from the beginning developing the program or the project with the teachers and then implementing it. And it's also runs November to February. Um, we don't, uh, this, this reading week project is a large project. It's not just science. So. Um, depending on how many schools want a science-based theme is how present we are at these events. Okay, another fun thing we do are rule trips. We go um, outside of Vancouver to different areas of BC and up uh, into the Yukon. These are when we went uh, two years ago now to uh, the interior out in the East Kootenai area. We went to Caslow, Nelson, Castlegar, Crawford Bay. Uh, so it, it offers volunteers an opportunity to see areas of BC that you probably would never travel to. Crawford Bay is a really small town. They have 100 students from K to 12 in the same school. So we, <laughs> and beautiful new, brand new um, green school. It was just amazing. And it's, it's a very different dynamic out there as opposed to schools in Vancouver. They're just, it's very laid back. Everyone is just kind of, it's very casual, lots of fun. And they're so interested because they, they're not exposed to scientists or, you know, the crazy things that we can bring into their classroom as many as the kids are here in Vancouver. 
Uh, okay, in focus, uh, infinite opportunities and careers using science. This is a new program we're running. It's a pilot project to see if it'll actually be effective. Um, it's aimed at grade 11 students, and the idea is to show them what you can do with science in the workplace. Um, so we've developed a series of workshops that complement their curriculum, but also incorporate um, various careers or um, uh, yeah, various careers that use the science that they're actually learning. So one of our, our workshops is on um, viral transmission, and we you know we feature viral epidemiologists, uh, statisticians, that kind of thing. And it's to increase, of course, I just said this, to increase the awareness, get them engaged, get them thinking, oh, I'm going to university in a year or two, I should, you know, really, I should really consider sciences. And um, it's also one of our programs where the activities, the lesson plans, the PowerPoints are all prepared for you. And uh, the subjects are physics, chemistry, and biology. And it's running from now till, uh, till December over the first semester. So this one we're looking for very um, enthusiastic, very um, charismatic people to um, uh, lead these workshops to show, to get the kids engaged as well. Okay, so other things, uh, we do work with Science World, uh, the Girl Guides, various summer camps, uh, conferences, learning expos, career fair. This is a some work we did at the National Science and Technology Week happening in a couple in November. November? No. March. March. <laughs> There's another one in November. <laughs> right. That's okay. Great. So, how do we as coordinators support you to do this great work in the community? Uh, we offer training, which we'll do after this. We have an abundance of supplies and resources. We just um, spent a big chunk of money on new supplies that are going to be just amazing <laughs> and resources. We can supply you and help you develop your activity. Um, we also supply a budget for your classroom visits of up to $20 in case there's something that we don't have and you want to do. And we also do uh, appreciation, volunteer appreciation events throughout the year, just as a way to say thank you. And how do we communicate with our volunteers? Um, we have a monthly newsletter that we send out and bi-weekly volunteer opportunities. So the newsletter is more announcements and the volunteer opportunities are things that are coming up that we need volunteers for. It'll s describe the event, um, the time, where it's taking place and who to contact. So we make it pretty, pretty easy to get involved. Sometimes we'll send out urgent call emails if we're really desperate for volunteers. Um, update emails, I should take that out because everything that we update will be in this monthly newsletter. We try to limit the amount of spam or emails that we're, we don't want to spam you. <laughs> yeah. um, we have our website, uh, which we're just in the process of updating. But that has a lot of information, contact information, access to activity ideas, supply lists and Facebook, <laughs> of course. <laughs> we're not on Twitter, we don't know how to work it, so we're just gonna stick to Facebook. 